what we're doing today, everyone, is we're going to fetch some data from the web. That's going to be from an API in this situation, but it could be from web scraping, it could be from anywhere. And we're going to write it to an air table, which is the new hot hot on the web. So if this is something you are interested in and you want to get integrated with that really quickly, let's crack into it. Okay, so if you remember from last time, I took information from a news API and we built a little Python script which fetched the data and then we were writing it to a Google Sheet. But today we're going to write it to an Airtable. And on the left, you can see I've already built out the table structure. In an Airtable, they call the databases bases and tables are still tables. That's, that's pretty obvious. It's almost like a spreadsheet, more so in an Airtable. I mean, it's like a spreadsheet in Excel or in Google Sheets, but they call it tables. And if we look on the right over here, so this is how the data structure comes back. It's a list of articles. This is what we care about. It's got the title, description, published at, content, things like that. And if you look on the left, I've already set up our table to accommodate that. So we have an auto-generating ID. That's just a, a unique ID that we can reference in the future. We have a title, just a long text. We have an URL, which is, I've actually just made it a single line text for now, but you can use a proper URL validation. And then we have a published at, and then we have a created at, which is auto-generated as well. Published at is just a date, and that does require a specific structure. So let's jump over to the code quickly. Okay, so if you remember from last time, we've got our news API client. I'm not gonna go over that because I've done it in previous videos, I'll link to it. But basically, it's just a quick Python script to let us fetch these news articles from that API I just showed you. Then we've got our Airtable client, which I've built out. There is one in Pipey, the, so you can install it on pip, but I didn't like that one, and I like building things from first principles, to be honest. And that one wasn't working for me for some reason. So I quickly did it myself. So now if we just quickly check through this, it's pretty simple because I've only implemented one, one specific function, which is just insert records. I haven't done updates. I haven't done deletes. I haven't done fetches. I've just done the inserts. So this is very straightforward. And the one difference is I've built this out as a, a class because in my mind, this is my thinking. You can have, well, you have one API key. That's just for your count on Airtable. I'll also include a link to show you how you generate that API key, very simple. But with Airtable, you obviously can have multiple bases. You have multiple um, bases of these. So my thinking was maybe there's situations that we want to have two, we want to be able to write two different databases or bases at Airtable in the same time. Maybe uh, it's a situation of one type of information from an API you want to put in this one database, one type of information you want to put into another database on your Airtable. In theory, you could also just write it to a different table. So if you look here, you can instantiate with one with your API key and a specific database key. I'll show you how to get that. I've just got some basic headers that I have to generate for authorization each time. So it's your API key and that basic header. Then if you quickly just look at this little function at the bottom, so this is a private function. So that little underline normally indicates private. And basically what that does is from what I understand in the documentation, you can only send up to 10 items a time into Airtable. So what I've done is I've created a function that chunks, basically takes in a list of items. You say how many items you want. You can see here, I've said it's 10. And then it returns these 10 pieces of chunks. Let me quickly show you why I did this 10 chunking thing. So if I go to the air table, and this is actually where we're gonna get the, the base key I was telling you about a bit later. We just grab that from the API documentation. It generates it for us. I'll link you to this, this page. It's just airtable.com API, and it lets you select all of your bases and gives you your key for it. 
So now if I just go down to table one, which is great by the way, it shows you all the different fields you've already put in, shows you the type of data that it's gonna generate, what type of values you can give it. So title, I can just give it text. For the O, just give it text, because it's I made it also a single line text. The date, this is what I was saying, it has to be in a specific format. So this is just um, something that you would wanna check and make sure you're conforming to. And then over here, you got our auto-generated timestamp. So now quickly, if I go to the create records, over here it says your request body should include up to 10 rec record objects. So that's why I'm doing this chunking function to split it up. Quickly to go through the inset records, we have our responses, because now I'm gonna be potentially sending multiple requests because of that 10 item limit so if we have say 20 items, we're gonna be sending two requests. So I go through the chunks, I build up this data into a specific structure. It's just data. So this is what Airtable expects. It expects a records and then a list. And I'm basically just appending each item that I want to insert, which is what I get back from the, the news API. All of the fields I want to insert, then fields conform to these ones. So I'm given a title, an URL, published at. And then also, just to note, I'm obviously not including the auto generate ones. And then I pass the item in. I brought up my URL using the base URL. That's the base URL. And then obviously the base key. Uh, then I include the table name. And then I send off that response, I transform to JSON and I add it to my list and I return that back. Okay, let me quickly show you where I actually use this now. Let me quickly show you where I know that structure needs to be the way it is. If you see, that's why I did the authorization header the way I did it. Where is it? That was over there. I don't set the content type because the request library we used does that already. And then this is why I did the data structure the way we did it is the data when you do it on the command line as a, a curl request, it expects JSON with a records key and then a list of all the options we want. So that's why I did it the way I did it. Okay, now if I quickly run through the actual flow, we import in a bunch of things, import in the news client, the Airtable client, We've got a couple of query dates because of how I need to transform, as I was saying. I'm not gonna go through that. I decided to allow passing a lot of these variables as um, command line arguments for my script. So the API key, get it from the environment variable. I'll link you to my environment variable video. Base key is an argument, table name is an argument, query is an argument, because that's what I'm sending to the news API. Create my client. I do have an option to I do have an option to pass a date. So give me all the news articles since X time. And if that's not there, it just fails and I set as none and I let uh, the news API client do what it does. And then in my main running script, all I'm doing is fetch the articles, same client we've always used, collect the response, go through each article in the response, fetch the data I need transform it back into a, a Python data time, date time object. I'm just picking out the things I want from that article, building it up into what I need to send uh, the Airtable API, which I just showed you, adding it to the list of my process items, and then I just Airtable insert records. So let me quickly show you how that works. I already typed it out because I don't want to make a mistake. And let's get our Airtable open and write that that way. We're gonna search for things about chocolate cake. And then there we go, it writes it straight away into our Airtable. And that was very easy, very quick. And the reason why I wanted to do this with Airtable is because Airtable integrates really, really well with Zapier. So this basically means we can start writing Python scripts, which pull data in from somewhere on the web, puts into an Airtable, and if we have Zapier or Integromat or some other automation software monitoring our table, we can do a specific thing when that happens. 
so we can maybe send ourselves an email or send ourselves a message or maybe you have a Twitter account that you want to post specific information about the moment it gets picked up or happens. So yeah, there's lots of options you can have with this. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoy that. And again, all we're doing is connecting some data that we're fetching from the web using our Python script, writing it to a Airtable API, and hopefully you took something away from that. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop any comments that you have below, any questions, any problems, any videos you want me to see. But yeah, don't forget to subscribe because then you're going to get notifications the moment I release any new videos. And I'll see you all next time. Thank you.